Well, good evening, everyone. Indeed, it's a blessing to be here tonight. For me, it is really. A month ago today, my daughter was getting uh, married in England, and I went over on the boat. And we docked at half six, and I was driving off the boat, and I took a pain in my chest. I kept on driving, being Irish, you do those kind of things. But after about 40 minutes, I knew, I said to my wife, I'm going to have to stop. I think I've taken a heart attack. She says, you're joking. I says, no, I'm not. And I pulled in the side of the road, rang for an emergency ambulance. And they said, we'll be with you in two hours and 20 minutes. I said, don't rush, there's no hurry. <laughs> what can you say to that? But anyway, I ended up, there was a guy at the shop and I spoke to him and he said, follow me. And he drove us to the hospital, we just followed him. So I ended up in the hospital and the cardiologist came to see me then, later that day, and he says, yes, all the tests show you've had a heart attack. I says, I knew myself, I said, this is my sixth heart attack. He says, well, we'll do an angiogram tomorrow and we'll see what the damage is. I says, tomorrow? He says, yes. I says, no, I don't plan to be here tomorrow. My daughter's getting married. He says, out of the question, I'm sorry, he says, but I could not allow that. I says, but did I tell you something? I am a Christian, and I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then I said this, and I believe in the resurrection. So I don't plan to be dead too long, let me tell you. And he shook his head at me, that's the truth. He says, it's good you have that philosophy in life, he says. But you know, it's the risk of you dying. You could die because of this. And I says, listen, it means nothing to me. It means nothing to me. I'm going to this wedding tomorrow, let me tell you. And he shook his head. I did go to the wedding. I said to my son, listen, do you see if I clock it here before it's over? Prop me up and just take photographs. <laughs> he says, Dad, you're crazy. But I, I know that might sound flippant, but I'm going to tell you this, people. I'm going to tell you this, it did not bother me in the least. My wife said to me, David, how do you feel? I said, it's getting worse. Isn't this dead exciting? And she looked at me. I said, imagine I could be with the Lord today. And she said, brother, you didn't talk like that. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, but it is exciting. <laughs> I'm just saying this, people, when we know the Lord Jesus Christ and Him we live and move and have our being, it should not bother us at all. It's not, but you know, that's not what I wanted to talk to you about, but I had to say this because it's a month today since that happened. And thank God I've not felt sick or ill. But I was glad when Alan opened singing, that opened the eyes of my heart, Lord, because I want to read to you from Ephesians where it talks about all the special or spiritual blessings that we have in God the Father. And Paul begins there in Ephesians 1, he says, Blessed be the God and Father for our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Now when he goes on, he says here, I want to pray for you. And then he says this, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints and do not cease to give thanks for you. And then he says this, but I want to pray this, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. Having the eyes of your heart opened. And here's what he says, that you may know that you may know. Now here's the problem with this for me. It says in Romans 10 as well, uh, we know all things work to the good. Isn't that what it says? 
My problem is sometimes I don't know. And I say, I hope this is working to the good. But Paul says, no, we know. But you know what I'm going to say? It's by faith. We know that all things work to the good. And it's just learning to trust him in that. You see, I had a problem this week. I listened to a theologian. And I got the shock of my life because this man started to talk about Isaiah 53. And he says, is there a healing in the atonement? That was the question that he put up. Is there healing in the atonement? I want you to think about this. Is there a healing in the atonement? He quoted Isaiah 53, and I want to quote Isaiah 53 to you as well. Now here's what we read in God's word. Concerning the suffering servant, the Lord Jesus, he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hid their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Do you see when we sang that there about the love, how much he loved us? He loved us that much that he stretched out two arms and died for us. That's what his love cost. It says he, the Lord Jesus, took upon himself the chastisement that brought us peace and with his wounds we are healed. We are healed. There is healing. You know, for the whole sin problem, the Lord says, no, there's forgiveness. For eternal death, he says, no, there's eternal life. And for sickness, there is healing in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you know that truth. I hope you know it. Luke 10, or Luke 9, take any of scriptures, it says the Lord anointed them and sent them out and he gave them orders to heal the sick. Luke 9 and Luke 10, one both said the same thing, that he sent out the 72 and again it was going to the towns and heal the sick. It's there. By his stripes we are healed. Now here's where I see the problem. People saying, well, how come is it? I'm a Christian 40 years. These things still happen. We still have sickness and disease and all kinds of things. Isn't that right? What about Paul when he says, I left trophy, must have Miletus sick? What did he say to Timothy? Timothy, drink a little wine for your stomach's sake. People say, well, if there's divine healing, why can we not walk in it? I listened to a preacher once, and he said to me, no, we have divine health. And I says, really? He says, yes, there's healing in the torment. You should not be sick. He says, I've never been sick since I got saved. I thought, my goodness. That man was preaching in America and collapsed on the platform and went in the hospital, was there for seven weeks and died. Yes, and his wife got a bill to pay for the medical expenses and she had to sell her house to get him brought home because he had no insurance. He thought he didn't need it. You know what, you can turn on your TV and you'll see all these faith healers. Isn't that right? saying that you shouldn't be sick. I had a man come to me once and he says, David, I can't fellowship with you anymore. And I says, why? He says, you've been diagnosed with diabetes. And I says, that's right. He says, that proves there's sin in your life. And he says, I can't fellowship with you anymore. And he broke fellowship with me because of that reason. What I tell you, when people are seeking to read God's word, 
There is, I have to say this, I know there's healing. I have seen God heal and the miraculous. And I've seen it happen immediately. You know, I, I prayed for a line of people and a woman had her head bowed and I put my hand on her head and I prayed for it. And when she looked up, she just stared at my tie, the lovely tie on. I said, get your own tie. And then she says, I was blind. Do you pray for me? That's what she said. But many times, because I have the anointing of an evangelist, but I, I was speaking once in a rehab, a drug rehab. There must have been 60 people sitting there. And I said to them, listen to me. There's resurrection power in the name of Jesus. If you only believe he can break the addiction in your life and set you free. Do you believe that, I said? And nobody moved. And I looked at him and said, listen to me. There's power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to set you free. I don't care what your addiction is. And a girl at the very back sitting nodded her head. And I looked down on the scene and she started to cry. She looked like Ozzy Osbourne. All the makeup running down her face. And I says to her, can I pray for you? And she came out into the aisle, and as she started to walk, I looked at her, and my heart wept. Do you know why? She had a steel caliber on her leg. And she hobbled her way to the front, and my heart went out to this girl. And as she came up where I had been sitting, my seat was empty, and I said, sit down there. And the sister, I'm going to pray and ask God to touch your leg. And there was two boys leaning against the radiator and they laughed out loud. Touch her leg, do you hear them? And I looked at them and I said, sit down, let me pray. And the girl sat down and I knelt down and I was going to, just about to lift her leg and I thought, does this hurt you if I lift it? And she said, no. And I lifted, I was holding her foot and I bowed my head like this and the Spirit of God showed me just like this. There was a crack and the Spirit of God hit her in the leg and the thigh bone and she just went, oh, like this. And I looked at her and she opened the straps, stood up and ran down the middle of the aisle completely healed. Do you know what happened next? About 40 others jumped up to, pray for me, pray for me. And I thought, what? They're all sitting like a pack of dummies. And now you're all shouting, pray. Do you know why? Because they've seen the Spirit of God move. So don't tell me God doesn't heal. But here's what I'm going to say. Paul prayed for many. Even his handkerchiefs were sent out and people used them for healing. Is that right? We know that. We know that. Do you know what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12? He says, but there was a thorn in the flesh. And he says, I prayed three times and asked the Lord to take it from me. And guess what? God said, no. No. But do you know what he says? My grace is sufficient for you. And here's what I'm going to tell you, people. Do you see if you're praying for a healing and you don't seem to get it? Then God's grace is sufficient for you. It is, because he promises, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. In fact, he said backwards, you leave, you forsake, never will I. God is faithful. He doesn't say, you know, oh, you'll not suffer persecution. The guy tried to tell me that today. There's no tribulation for the saints. I thought, are you kidding me? What Bible are you reading? This is through much tribulation will we enter the kingdom of God. There is trials and all of these things come upon us. That is the truth. But I'm going to tell you, God's grace is sufficient. It's sufficient that you can know his peace. And nothing will rock that if you're looking to him. If you're standing on the word of God, I'm going to tell you this. When you read God's word, there's times when you read it 
And I'm going to explain this more on Tuesday night when I'm speaking to St. Finneans. But seeing is believing, and believing is receiving. Do you know why? Do you see when I believed? That night I got converted, I said, Lord, I believe that this is real. Jesus Christ is alive. And I says, God, I want this in my life. You know what I tell you? I was born again. That night the Spirit of God came upon me and I woke up the next morning and I knew my life was different because when I believed, I received. And you want to find sanctification and holiness. I must have read a hundred books. I wrote a thesis of 20,000 words on sanctification and holiness. I must have read a hundred books. I turned and I was reading 1 Thessalonians 4 and Paul says, I want you to know this, brethren, concerning sanctification and holiness. You know what he says? When you want to walk and please God. That's what he said. And I stopped and thought, what? And I looked at it. Do you want to please God? And I stopped and I said to myself, why do I want sanctification or holiness? Is it because it says, be ye holy because I am holy? Or is it because I want to say, I walk in holiness? And it says, Lord, forgive me. I want to walk to please you in all that I do. That's what I want, a clear conscience that I'm pleasing God in the way that I live my life. But you know what I'm saying? I receive, what it says in Acts 26, and receiving sanctification through faith in me. That's what it says. And you know what I realized? I moved into that. I stepped into it. Do you know why? It was by faith. I received it just as the same. Receiving salvation. Do you hear what I'm saying? I stepped into it because Christ has done it for me. All I have to do is to receive that. And I realized that truth became part of my experience. What I'm saying is when we're seeking to please God, you can have God's grace that abides and amongst us, remains in us constantly. Nothing takes away my joy in the Lord. Nothing, nothing. The doctor told me six years ago, he says, we're going to take your leg off. I says, you're talking to the wrong person. It's the guy in the next bed you must be looking for. He said to me, I'm sorry, but your leg has to come off. Do you know what I'm going to tell you? I was 35 years saved that day, that very day. And I says, Lord, this will not stop me rejoicing in what you've done in my life. Because salvation is the greatest thing of all, knowing that our sins are forgiven and that it's under the blood. And I says, Lord, I'll praise you, leg or no leg. That's the truth of it, because of God's joy. I'm saying to you tonight, it's right to receive healing. Of course it is. James 4 says, send for the elders and let them anoint you and pray for you to be healed. That is in accordance with God's word. Here's what I'm saying to you is God's grace is even greater. If you have to abide or remain in it, don't let that make you better. No, I realize sickness can make you better or better. Yes, I've seen people get better over it instead of because of God. God has failed me and let me down. Or it can make you better. Like Paul, you can embrace it and say, no. God's grace is sufficient because I have his peace in my life. I have his joy. Joy and peace and righteousness come through the Holy Spirit. People don't get hung up on these issues and saying, well, why is God not doing it? One person said to me when I visited them, God let me down. God never turned up. I says, God was there all the time. You just didn't want to hear the answer. Some people want it done their way. But when we submit to his will and purpose, that is enough people to take us through every trial. Every trial. It seems this last six years for me has been a baptism of suffering. But I can say this. Do you know what? 
Every time I go through that trial, it takes me closer to him. It does. It takes me closer to him because I turn to him immediately and say, Lord, what is happening in this situation? I want God to speak to me. And he does. He does. It's a living word. And we know God's presence in the midst of that. And you can rest in that. Paul says here, I pray that the eyes of your eyes may be open. But he says this is a revelation of him. When he says the spirit of truth, it doesn't say you know the truth about everything. No, it says you'll have a revelation concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it's about. It's knowing him. Paul says, I know whom I have believed. And he doesn't say who or what. No, he says it's a person, the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we're focused on him, that is an all that is all in all that we know him and desire to know him more. Like the two in the Emmaus Road, the desire for holy heartburn. He says, did not our hearts burn within us when he opened to us the scriptures? Reading God's word, you can find his peace and you, you can know it and you can rest in it. I want to leave it there. I just want to pray, but... You know, it's right to come and ask for prayer. Of course it is. What I'm saying is, if you say, though a tarry, wait for it. Don't give up hope or say, no, God has failed me. No, he hasn't. What I'm saying to you, if it's not healing, I can guarantee his grace will be bestowed upon you that you can go with a smile on your face. That's what it means that in all things we give thanks. Not saying as long as he answers us and I'm walking out healed. No. But if we know him in the midst of it, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in, in the fiery furnace, the Lord didn't say, I've come to get you out of it. He just says, No, I've come to join you. And he was in the midst of it. And when you know him in the midst of it all, that is being on the anchor, isn't that right? You're on the solid rock and nothing can move that and you can rest in that. Amen. Amen. Let's just bow our heads. Our Father, we thank you indeed for your precious word, Lord. Lord, as we sang that at the very beginning, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Oh, Lord, let that be the desire of every heart, Lord. We want to know you and the power of your resurrection, Lord, I thank you for your Holy Spirit that leads us into all of the truth to a knowledge of yourself, Lord, and that your grace, like Paul said, is sufficient. And that weakness, Lord, that becomes our strength because of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Reveal that truth to us, Lord, what you mean by your grace is sufficient, Lord. Let us know that truth, Lord, whatever our trial or our situation that we find ourselves in, Lord, a peace that passes all understanding. So, Lord, I pray for your people here tonight, Lord. You know every heart. You know every individual. You know their needs, Lord. And, Father, I pray, meet those needs in accordance with your word, Lord. Let your will be done in every life for the glory of your name and the building of your church, Lord. Amen.